Hello, my name is Grim, and today we're going to be taking a look at the scenario Hope's Last Day, an alien RPG scenario published by Freely. This is an introduction scenario that can be found in the main core rulebook and can be ran from anywhere between two and four hours, depending on how the players decide to progress through the actual complex. The scenario points out that this is a typical last act of what is common in what they call a cinematic play. Um, which is basically a, a tougher and far more uh, bombastic uh, scenario than you'd find in their other uh, system play, which is campaign play. Cinematic scenarios are tough and come with a lot of extra intrigue with uh, double crossing and personal agendas being played out. So be warned, uh, the players will hamper each other and at some point cross swords uh, to the point where they might try to outright murder each other as their agendas are threatened. If this happens, the PCs are taken from the players and they become NPCs turn against the actual group. However, I generally tend to leave the players in charge of them uh, until the point where they're uh, ran down uh, or get away with it. It's uh, much more entertaining that way. However, this is very group dependent and it depends on how your players feel about PvP and uh, you should always ask beforehand how they want that handled. Uh, so no one can foster or harbour bad feelings uh, when actions are taken against them. Hope's Last Day tells the story of the infamous colony on LV-426. Hadley's Hope, seen in the movies Alien, and is a perfect untold tale uh, to get to know the system. It can be short and brutal, or slow and tense, depending on the player's choice of how exactly they're going to get off the planet. Uh, before they are taken as hosts by the Xenomorph. The players are given a good choice of PCs, offering various agendas and equipment uh, that they could use along the way. Uh, there is also an option to play an Android, however I would not allow this for a beginning group. Androids overrule the basic mechanics of the game's stress and have uh, stacked stats. Uh, where they have their place in the universe, uh, here in an introduction game, I would avoid it as it doesn't teach the player the core mechanics, and uh, they are incredibly good. Any player with uh, the ability to play the android might become very gun ho and uh, because they are quite good at combat, it will pull most of the tension out of the game. So for now, these are best left off the table. The art for the PCs isn't the best as well, and you might want to look to find some replacement pictures. It is the future, after all, and cameras do exist. The action is tense from the start as the PCs arrive back to the colony after a long walk, which is a, a fine reason, but it's a little bit thin uh, for the, the hook of the game for them to start without any prior knowledge of what is happening at Hadley's Hope. And fixing some equipment out in the field or recovering a broken vehicle might be a better buy-in as they could return with the people from the vehicle who would be anyone from the staff of uh, the colony uh, and it would give you that more sort of uh, reason for the diverse group to be coming back at the same time. Other than that, you have these random people who don't really associate too much, uh, just all out in a long walk together, which doesn't really make much sense. On arrival, there is trouble. Only an emergency signal is playing over and over. I feel they should have some prior knowledge that something has been going on for a few days. People are going missing and the upper management keeping secrets uh, to keep the lid on it. I would throw in a few rumours uh, at the start here uh, on the return uh, so they actually have a, a clue that something was definitely going on. Some of the pregens do hint at some rumours and some just outright know about the aliens as well, but it is a bit of a crapshoot whether they'll be involved or not, and the one which has the most information is the android, which I feel should be left out because they are a, a little bit of a nightmare to handle. From here, the story is orientated on finding out what is going on properly and getting the hell off LV426. To do this, they will need to locate two NPCs that hold the correct key cards to access the docking clamps for their only transport off the rock. And so, 
we play out the last days of Hadley's Hope. Assuming you have seen this 40 year old movie, um, you will know exactly what is going on. And if you haven't, uh, you can go and think about your life choices up until now, as it's a brilliant film and everyone should watch it. Alien RPG scenarios are laid out in two ways when it comes to design of their scenarios. You have the environment where it tells you what you'll find in each location and you also have the overall arcing stories that will be played out in each of the acts. Usually there are three acts in most scenarios, uh, but as mentioned earlier, this is an intro game which only gives you a taste and is only one act long. Uh, should you have more acts, the PC's personal agendas will change as they react to the unfolding story. This is one of the strongest aspects of the system and can truly drive a player and immerse them in the story. Getting back to the colony, the scenario literally opens with a bang as a gunshot goes off and the piercing scream can be heard through the air ducts, setting the tone and moods as you move forward into the scenario proper, as they start to discover what has happened here and track down those key cards. Company Agent Reynolds and Dr. Chomensky have to be found. It is assumed the PCs will know where these two are likely to be and the locations of office blocks C2 and E1 are given. This narrows the search somewhat as Hadley's Hope is a massive place and the, the maps uh, are pretty bewildering to the new players. As they make their way to these locations, the GM or the game mother is given several triggers to increase the tension as they explore the massive complex. This comes mostly in the forms of the stealth system where several aliens are hiding amongst the ducks and empty rooms and will begin to stalk their prey. Here there is a nice cat and mouse game as the players learn about how to safely look for aliens and each section of the base has a reasonable amount of detail for the, the GM to improvise with despite its size. To ratchet up the tension while being stalked uh, through these sections, it can be further complicated uh, by suggested lures to draw the players into helping those who are still alive outside the main two objective NPCs uh, to get those cards. They can pick up some lone survivors at Tannen's Casino and Billy's Bar. Having these NPCs constantly on the PA trying to be rescued, pleading and bargaining uh, for their lives uh, is a, a constant reminder of the harrowing situation that the PCs find themselves in. They are also useful uh, to fill in the, the PCs on exactly what went down uh, when it went from normality to a battle zone in the blink of an eye while they were on their long walk. One is meant to be unconscious and can be ignored if you want uh, to shorten the scenario. Uh, you can actually kill off both of them heard over the intercom as the the PCs move to either try and help them or just ignore them going for them key cards. But include, uh, including them will add about an hour onto the game time. Where the scenario is sandboxed in nature, their locations and their starting points will dictate uh, where is the closest to them and so forth, um, keeping the pace of the game uh, steady and on point unless they choose to go after these two survivors uh, which are on the PAs. They will end up at C1 first. Here they will find Reynolds dead, her keycard destroyed. They will head up to C1 first, the offices where they will find the company agent Reynolds. She is dead and her key card they are coveting to get off this rock is destroyed. They will find her torso in front of a computer. Uh, with an open comms link to Dr. Chomsky, who is stuck in the medical bay. It is here where they are most likely to face their first hugger. These offices is where my players decide to stop and take a rest and have their guard down as they, they recover some of their stress. Why they chose to do it in front of a body which has clearly been killed by an alien, who knows. But if they do do this, uh, this is, a little beastie can uh, be quite effective here as they'll start to walk around and uh, you can go after an isolated target if possible. It is unlikely they'll get uh, taken down, 
by this facehugger, but uh, it will prove tougher than they expect with the few weapons they have at this point, and uh, it will set the tone for the rest of the game. Play the aliens as shifting shadows and noises around the next bend as the players progress from C block to B block and here they will find their first proper challenge as they start to question everything you say and will perhaps start to sweep the area more cautiously. Picking up the scout in B block. Play into their fears and stalk them with the scout as they linger too long, perhaps looking to get to the, the weapons and the security lockers. You can have them breaking down the door and panicking as the scout drops down behind them just as they reach the shotgun and turn around and enter the conflict. It's quite a tense scene if played correctly. They could choose to go through the sub-basement as well. A bypassing block B. Here they will run into the sentry gun and the last stand of the, the colony. The audible clink, clink, clink as the sentry gun scans the corridor for uh, possible targets is a, a good indicator of them not to walk into it. Having to problem solve to get past this uh, is a, a nice scene as well. Um, they have to fool its sensors. It is equipped with both motion sensors and thermal sensors. However, you can choose to only have it set to one of these. If the ex-marine Hershey is with them, I would suggest giving them a few bonus and uh, tips or ideas of how to fool the gun sensors. Him knowing that perhaps it's set only to heat and wrapping yourselves in wet towels to dampen your own body signature. Uh, would be enough to get past the sentry by fooling it. The sentry is a great prize for them to have and uh, allow them to set up anywhere they wish. However, explain to them it has limited ammo and will only last for a few bursts. They will be delighted with this cache as past the sentry gun they will be able to pick up the incinerator unit and the pulse rifle. However, will take uh, a fair amount of shock and stress from the, the site of the last stand of the colony knowing that most people are now dead. Reaching E1, they will be greeted with the iconic labs and face huggers that can be seen in the Aliens movies. The dissecting and experimenting by the scientists on various hosts can be all put on display here. The good Dr Chomsky is locked away in the quarantine lab after the base's alarms went off and she is stuck there. From the evidence that is lying in the room with her, they can guess that she has been face-hugged and now holds uh, one of the chest bursters within her. With uh, her having the key card and being the only uh, route for survival, they have a dilemma on their hands. With a good manipulation role, she will admit to having an embryo growing inside her and knows she is doomed to die as the chest buster explodes from within. However, she does have the card key and I would have her make a devil's bargain that she should be frozen on the shuttle um, if she gives over the card or perhaps even holds onto it, refusing to, to let it go. The players will probably try and shoot her outright if they're fairly cold-hearted, knowing that uh, she is going to be a, a massive problem for them uh, when that chest chestbuster comes out, and they are correct. However, uh, try and play her with some humanity, and um, hopefully the players will do the same, and give them the, the sort of silver lining of hope that she can be frozen. This, however, is not the case. Have the chestbuster uh, break free uh, at the least uh, convenient time for the players. Other than that, uh, there's also the operations um, center here and a hidden alien in this block. These offer some plot points and an extra threat uh, should the PCs be packing a punch and uh, you need to turn up uh, the volume a little bit as they make their way to the transport. Block D on the east side of the complex is mostly decorative to the scenario to make the colony feel bigger and is uh, probably best ignored as it's off the beaten path and designed to be ignored I think as it is empty and offers very little uh, in the way of description. Keep them focused uh, and if they wander off in this direction have a few alien sightings uh, or sort of 
um, tracks and marks to show that uh, that way uh, there lies monsters. They have two options to get to the landing pad, which is their final destination. Going back the way they came through the west gate, or they can go for the north airlock in block A. Block A offers little, but serves um, as a, a more tense environment, as it's uh, soaked with water and is boiling hot. There is also another drone here uh, that can be used con in conjunction with Dr. Chomsky's chestburster for added fun, or the, the scout uh, from Block B and the drone from uh, Block E, gathering and tailing them together as uh, they, they gather around their prey. However they get out to the air traffic control centre where the transport sits, they will have to walk out onto the, the landscape of the actual planet itself, play up the whipping wind and the desolation of the barren landscape with nothing but rocks and their shadows to hide in. The shuttle itself has been quietly filled with alien eggs, ready to be transported off the world by company agent Reynolds and her staff, looking for a good payday before everything hit the fan. Being hunted by the drones and scouts at this point adds pressure along with the atmosphere, rush the PCs inside, only to be confronted with a throng of facehuggers which are waiting to be let out. It is a vicious trap and will spell the end to most groups, with little chance for survival. But should they have the incinerator unit and a few lucky rolls, they could make it and take the shuttle and leave. I will say that the maps are a little hard to read due to the monochromatic style, but all in all it's not too bad and the aesthetics are on point. Being only one act, it does give you everything you want, while being limited enough for an intro game. It is a good outing for the system, even if it does lack um, the, the changing of genders and uh, it's got a few hiccups here and there. Overall, uh, it's a, a good recommend for me. And with that, thanks for listening, drop a comment below if you've played this scenario and please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. See you again next time.